So good morning friends. Let us start with transient response of RLC circuit. In previous, till previous class, we have completed with transient response of RL and RC circuits. So for both the cases, we have seen source free response as well as forced response and for all of these cases we have solved uh, various numericals so definitely in exam either it will be uh, there will be many questions uh, weightage of this uh, is of 15 marks so rl rc so and rlc they may ask you the derivations for uh, maybe current or voltage or there may be numericals that's all on this uh, unit there is nothing more to ask so it's very easy i hope you have already seen our uh, videos also so those who are late comers they can go through those videos and if they are having any difficulty uh, you can ask me at any moment of time in either in lecture or of the lecture even okay so today we'll start and finish up with transient response of rlc circuit so in previous case we have seen only rl or rc circuit now here all the terms r l and c they are combined and only series response is in your syllabus, no parallel response, okay? So their connections uh, will be always in series, okay? So this is the circuit diagram, resistance, inductance and capacitance, they are connected in series and this switch S is open for infinite amount of time. That means the initial conditions on this or the energy or the voltage stored on these elements will be zero as this switch was open for infinite amount of time that means this source was disconnected or it was not at all connected to these components that's why there were no energy on any of the component so this is the initial condition now at time t equal to zero we have pressed this switch or we have made this switch on so this part will become short or this voltage source will be connected to this RLC. Now we are interested to find what is the equation of this current, what is the voltage on this capacitor, all these equations will be interested to find out. So for that purpose, very simple is first you draw the equivalent circuit at time t equal to zero plus. So if you will draw equivalent circuit at time t equal to zero plus, this voltage source will be connected to this RLC circuit. And if you want to find any equation, you have to find first the differential equation. You have to represent this RLC circuit in the form of a differential equation. So for that purpose, we'll apply KVL for the circuit. Okay, so first you draw the equivalent circuit so this is the equivalent circuit drawn i'll close this video so that uh, we'll be able to see yes now let's redraw the circuit at time t equal to zero plus so this is the circuit diagram 
this voltage source is connected to resistance inductance and capacitance so the if you want to apply kvl for this it is voltage equal to drop across this drop across this plus drop across this so vr plus vl plus vc will be equal to v that is kvl at time t equal to 0 plus or if you will apply kvl for this particular circuit so applying kvl you got this equation number 1 that is v equal to vr plus vl plus vc now we know that this current i is flowing through capacitor also so same current is flowing through capacitor and capacitor current we know that it is given by c into dvc by dt okay where vc is the voltage on the capacitor so this value of ic you substitute in this equation so what is vr vr is equal to i into r so i is nothing but your c into dvc by dt so c into dvc by dt into r that is r into c into dvc by dt this is vr that is voltage across this resistance voltage across inductor how we are calculating it it is l di by dt so l di by dt is the a uh, drop across or voltage across the inductor now i value is nothing but c dvc by dt so l into d by dt of c dvc by dt substituting the value of current here now differentiate this so you will get that it is l into c into d2 vc by dt square or it is a second order differential uh, second order differentiation okay now put these values in equation 1 so substitute value of vr here vl here and vc as it is vc and v as it is v so you will get the equation as v is equal to rc into dvc by dt plus lc into d2 v by dt square d2 vc by dt square plus vc is equal to v now uh, we want to express this equation in terms of the second order this is second order differential equation and we want solution for vc so if we want solution for this equation then what is the first step first step is to keep the uh, coefficient of highest order term as 1 so here highest order term is second so d2 vc by dt square is the second order uh, differentiation so for this second order you have to keep constant uh, multiplication factor as 1 so you have to divide it by whole equation by lc so if you will divide whole equation by l into c you will find that the coefficient of d2 vc by dt square will become 1 so divide the whole equation by lc and rearrange so this term i'll take first so d2 vc by dt square Uh, then second term i'll take this dvc by dt so this rc divided by lc so cc will get cancel and r divided by l so r by l into dvc by dt this is second term and third term is here it is vc so it will be 1 over lc this lc you have to divide so it is 1 over lc into vc this is third term and equal to it was v only so divided by lc so it will be v by lc so this is a second order differential equation now uh, let us mark it as equation number 2 as per our uh, usual procedure now we want to find solution of this particular equation now how will be solution of this particular equation as there are two terms means or you can say uh, constant value is there on the right hand side or it is a forced response that means q value is present over here so as q value is present over here you will find that this particular uh, equation will have solution which contain two parts one is the pi and another is cf so cf we have calculated for previous cases also for here it will be pi also so for uh, from the equivalent circuit you can calculate this pi by two ways one you can directly take solution of this particular equation so that you will get the value so that is by this so from this equation 
we can uh, you substitute this d by dt as capital d so substituting d by dt as capital d you will find that this equation and take out vc as common from left hand side so you will find that this is d square plus r by l into capital d plus 1 by lc into bracket you make this into bracket and out of bracket you have to write vc equal to v by lc now uh, take this term on that side so it will be vc equal to v by lc divided by this d square plus r by l into d plus 1 by lc now for this particular equation if you want to find out its solution then since this v by lc is a constant value you have to replace this capital d by 0 so by replacing this capital d by 0 you will find that this these two terms will vanish and it will be only vc equal to v by lc divided by 1 by lc so it is vc equal to v by lc divided by 1 by lc this lc lc will get cancelled so vc will be equal to v at time t equal to infinity or this is the steady state response of this particular circuit or you can say it is the particular integration of this particular uh, solution of the equation okay so this either you can calculate it by this equation in this way or from the equivalent circuit you can see that for infinite amount of time if you are connecting a voltage source across rlc then across capacitor there will be definitely the charge on capacitor will become v at time t equal to infinity so that means the voltage on capacitor will become equal to v therefore vc at time t equal to infinity it is equal to v this is the steady state response of the circuit at time t equal to infinity or we can say that at infinite amount of time or under steady state the voltage on capacitor will become equal to v okay and that is the particular solution of this equation for any differential equation if you are finding out its solution you will find that there are two uh, two components one is the transient response and another is the steady state that means if you are keeping that particular circuit in the same fashion for a long time then whatever state that particular circuit will achieve that is nothing but the steady state but it will take certain amount of time to reach up to steady state and before reaching to steady state it will go or it will run under the transient response or it will have the transient response and that uh, response is nothing but the uh, this Uh, it is having two solutions one is the uh, cf and pi cf represent transient response and pi represents the steady state response so this pi we have found out for this now for cf the transient response is this so for this purpose we we have assumed that there is no excitation to the circuit that is v by lc term in this equation is zero because we have already found out the um, response for the source when source was connected for a long time that is nothing but the steady state value that we have already calculated now for transient response we'll assume that there is no source or that q term that is dy by dx plus py equal to q term that is constant term that we will assume it as zero so in equation 2 v by lc term will become zero so the uh, equation we can rewrite it as d square plus r by ld plus 1 by lc into vc equal to zero now this is the equation of which we want to find solution if we want to find solution of this this solution will be nothing but the cf or transient response of the circuit now from this you can say see that vc is equal to 0 or this term is equal to 0 so we'll say that this term is equal to 0 that is d square plus r by ld plus 1 by lc equal to 0 as 
this term is zero this is this is the second order or uh, you can say uh, second order equation uh, so it will have two equations uh, two sorry two roots so this characteristic equations have two roots and you can uh, find them by this is of the form a square uh, or you can say this coefficient is 1 uh, s square plus a uh, b s plus c so this coefficient is a that is 1 this coefficient is b and this coefficient is c so uh, the roots of this you can find it by minus b plus or minus under root of b square minus 4a into c divided by 2a so this is the way to find the roots of this particular quadratic now this uh, these roots are you substitute value of b as r by l so it will be minus b that means minus r by l plus or minus under root of b square that is r by l square minus 4 this 4 into a is 1 and c is 1 by lc so a into c divided by 2a a is 1 so substitute this now just simplify this you will find that it is minus r by 2l plus or minus under root of r by 2l square minus 1 by lc now let this particular value as alpha and this particular value as beta so that we can simply say that these two roots are m is m1 is equal to alpha plus beta and m2 is equal to alpha minus beta that is this plus this that is one root and this minus this is the second root so m1 is alpha plus beta and m2 is alpha minus beta so both these roots are defined by this equation now from this equation there are, we can see that there are four possibilities that is if this value uh, this r by 2l square if this value and this value if we are relating these two if this is greater than this that is one case if this is less than this this is another case if these two values are equal this is third case and fourth case if the r component is zero the, this, uh, this is the fourth case so for all these four cases how this circuit behaves that we'll see so case number one that is r by 2l bracket square it is greater than lc so in this case we, have, uh, we can see that the roots are both the roots are real and distinct so m1 is alpha plus beta and m2 is alpha minus beta so these roots are real and distinct so for this particular equation the solution of this differential equation if roots are real and distinct then uh, the solution for this differential equation it is given by vc of t equal to c1 into e raised to power m1 t plus c2 into e raised to power m2 t where c1 and c2 are the constants and this m1 and m2 are the roots which are having values of alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta so you substitute the value of m1 and m2 here so your uh, equation will have the solution as c1 into e raised to alpha plus beta into t plus c2 into e raised to power alpha minus beta into t now in this you you can take common uh, this e raised to alpha plus beta into t this exponential term you can separate it as e raised to alpha into e raised to beta uh, e raised to alpha t into e raised to beta t here also you can write it as e raised to alpha into e raised to minus beta t e raised to alpha t into e raised to minus beta t and you can take e raised to alpha t common so that this equation will become e raised to alpha t into bracket c1 plus e raised to beta t plus c2 into e raised to minus beta t where c1 and c2 are the constants now this is the over damped response and can be plotted as we'll see it in the graph it can be plotted as this this is the over damped response and it is plotted by this line okay 
we'll see how it is coming but for the time being you understand that it is the over damp response and plotted in the graph as that okay now case 2 case 2 is this particular value r by 2l square it is equal to lc uh, in previous case it was greater than lc 1 by lc now in second case will assume it as it is equal to lc so that means as these two terms are equal the we will find that this term this is equal to this so this term beta it is it will become zero because this minus this both the values are equal so beta will become equal uh, equal to zero so that means only alpha will be present in both the roots so that means m1 root equal to m2 root and it is equal to alpha so that means as beta is zero both the roots are real and repeated m1 and m2 both are having value as alpha that means it is the same root repeated so it is real and repeated roots if the roots are real and repeated then the solution of the differential equation it is given by vc of t is equal to c1 plus c2 t into bracket and into e raised to power m into t where m value it is equal to because both the roots are same so m1 equal to m2 equal to m that is nothing but alpha so you substitute this value here m so you will find that c1 plus c2 t into e raised to alpha t this is the solution of this particular equation for this case where c1 and c2 are the constant and these values of constants as we have already seen if you want to find values of constant you can find it by substituting the initial values or initial conditions what are the initial conditions of the circuit that you have to substitute and you can find the values of this constant so for rl and rc we have found it out as it was very easy to calculate but here you can calculate it only if the values of your inductance capacitance resistance and voltages are mentioned in the circuit so while solving the numerical we will find out the values of constants so till in theoretical derivation we will uh, keep it as c1 and c2 only okay so this is the critically damped response this sort of response is nothing but the critically damped response and it is as plotted in the graph as this this is the critically damped response so what you can find the difference between these two this is the steady state that is the value of source voltage it is v so this is the steady state value you can see this straight line is the steady state value now this particular in previous case which was over damped response so this value was starting from zero and it was reaching to this steady state value v after certain amount of time and this time was long as compared to this critically damped response in over damped response it will take more amount of time to reach to this steady state value whereas in critically damped uh, response it uh, it achieves this value steady state value earlier than the over damped response that means if you want to achieve the steady state earlier then you cannot keep the value uh, uh, of this r l and c as in case 1 because it takes more amount of time as in case 2 it takes less amount of time so you can keep this or we'll see the next cases also so case number 3 is this r by 2l square is less than 1 over lc so for this you will find that the roots are uh, this uh, this part is now if you will see this beta part now this portion is less than this or this term is more so this subtraction will have negative sign and it is in under root so beta value 
will have under root of minus sign that means there will be a uh, this is a complex case that is i or j term will appear in the uh, roots so the roots will become m1 is equal to alpha plus j beta and m2 is equal to alpha minus j beta so both these roots are complex conjugate of each other so these are the complex as this j term is there it is complex and as alpha plus j beta is one root and alpha minus j beta is another root they are conjugate of each other okay so this is the roots are complex conjugate so if the roots are complex conjugate then the solution of this type of equation it is given by vc of t is equal to e raised to power alpha t into bracket c1 cos of beta t plus c2 sin of beta t this is the solution for this particular equation where c1 and c2 are constant again you can find these values by the uh, from the values or uh, initial conditions if values of r l c and v are given to you now this response if you will plot in the graph you will find that it is the under damped response and this under damped response can be plotted at uh, plotted as this so this will have certain oscillations amongst this particular value so this is the steady state value so it will uh, you can observe this over damped response it is reaching to uh, this value and it is uh, it will be as it is it will remain as it is in critically damped also it will achieve the value but earlier than over damped and it will uh, be in uh, it will be in the steady state uh, remain in the steady state this under damped uh, response you will find that it is achieving the value steady state value faster than critically damped also so it is Uh, achieving this steady state value earlier than critically damped also but it will have certain oscillations so it will exceed the value of this v then again it will reduce than v again it will exceed v again it will reduce so these are the oscillations they are called as damped oscillations so this under damped response will have certain oscillations and these oscillations this first oscillation value will be more than this second oscillation value this value is more than this this value is more than this that means the nature of these oscillations is of dying out nature so this value is more this value is less than that this value is further less this value is further less this value is further less and so on so forth and it will reach to zero value uh, after certain amount of time or when the steady state or uh, transient is finished this uh, transient will die out and it will reach to final steady state value so till this it is the transient response and after settlement or settling down this is the steady state response okay so this is under damped response case so this we have seen case number 3 now case number 4 when r is equal to 0 if r is 0 you will find that roots will be purely imaginary because the first part is r alpha r is 0 so alpha will be 0 and r is 0 so this will be 0 so in beta only it will be under root of minus 1 over lc so that is this minus sign is there so j will be there and beta will be there so only j beta will be the value and this beta value it is nothing but it is 1 over lc lc is nothing but this is also called as 1 upon lc it is nothing but the omega square or under root of 1 over lc it is nothing but omega or you can say it is the natural oscillation frequency so roots will become j omega m1 is j omega and m2 is minus j omega 
So both the roots are plus or minus j omega. So that is both the roots are having only imaginary part. No real part is there. So if the roots are purely imaginary, then the solution of such type of differential equations it is given by v c of t is equal to c one cos of omega t plus c two sine of omega t, where c one and c two are the constants. So as the value of r is zero, then the circuit will not provide any kind of damping. That is, the response of the circuit will have pure oscillations. So it will never die out. So how will be the response? This value will start from this. It will reach to this. Again, it will go down to zero. It will reach to this value v. It will go down to zero. So it will be simply you can say it is the sinusoidal oscillations taking place. It will never reach to this steady state value for a constant means for a long time. It will reach to this value. Maximum value again. It will come down to zero value again. It will reach to this maximum value again. It will come down to zero value. That is simply your sine sinus sinusoidal waveform will be there. So that is called as undamped oscillations. Okay. So alternatively, we can find out as alternatively means this in this equation uh, in this case we have found out. The equations in terms of this voltage on capacitor or VC, we have found out this equation two, or equation number four, or equation number three. All these were in terms of VC. That is, we have calculated the value of voltage or the equation of voltage. Same, you can find this voltage equation. This was VC. This is V volt. Then this was oscillating. Around V. Now, if we want to find the equation in terms of I or the current, then you can apply KVL for any equation. It is the same V R plus V L plus V C. Now, you find out uh, all these equations in terms of current. In previous case, we have found out equations in terms of V C voltage. Now, here I R. Plus L D I by D T plus one by C integral I D T. So this is the equation. Now rearrange it, and uh, after rearranging, make coefficient of this second order as one. So that means divide it by L. So you will find that D two I by D T square plus R by L D I by D T plus I by L C equal to zero. This is the equation, and for this equation. Now this is second order uh, linear differential equation, so you can find the solution. It will consist of two parts, CF and PI. So you can find PI from equivalent circuit at time t equal to infinity. The voltage on capacitor will be V. That means the current will become zero. So I infinite will be zero, which is the steady state response. That is at time t equal to infinity, current value is zero. Same you can find out from this equation substituting d by dt as d. So this d square plus r by l d plus n by l c i equal to zero. Now in this equation, if we will find i equal to, you take this term on that side, so it will be zero by this, so it will be zero only. So i will be value. It is coming as zero at time t equal to infinity. So this is the particular integral. In previous case. In case of VC, this was V, as we have seen this this particular integral. This value, capacitor voltage, it was equal to V. That was the PI, and then CF we have found out in four cases. So similarly, here the CF uh, PI is value zero, and CF that is the transient response. And it is having the characteristic equation as this: d square plus r by l d plus one by l c into i equal to zero. So this equation four, it is same as that of this equation number four: d square plus r by l d plus one by l c into e c equal to zero. So here only difference is here it is v c, 
and here it is ic sorry this is ic right so that is the only difference this term is same so if this term is same all the four cases which we have seen earlier they will be same so you can derive it as it is and you will find that the values will remain same graphs will remain same so uh, it may be asked in the exam to derive for voltage across capacitor or current flowing through the circuit for rlc then you have to uh, you should be able to derive this either by this method if you have to find vc then this first part you have to do and if you this is common and if you want to find equation of in terms of current then you have to go for this procedure till pi this and cf value will be same in both the cases okay so i hope we have found out this uh, derivations and uh then the simulation so the over damped response uh, as time is going out will uh, simulate this circuit next time because uh, if i want to show you live simulation i think uh, i won't be possible to show it you Uh, all but let us start it if uh, not possible i'll show it in the next class also okay so uh, i'll show only on ppt this time and uh, live demonstration i'll show you uh, next time only okay so if over damped response for rlc circuit uh, this is the circuit of r value is 9 c value 500 microfarad uh, millifarad sorry and uh, l value is 5 ampere and this is the switch this is the voltage source so this voltage source it was open for a long time and then we have kept it uh, um, placed it at this particular time this is one case and another case you can keep this circuit uh, switch on for infinite amount of time and then you can open it at time t equal to 0 so it will become source free response and this circuit how it behaves if the value uh, or the uh, you can adjust the values of r l and c if you will adjust values of r l and c in the calculations which we have seen case 1 r by 2 l whole square if it is greater than 1 by l c that will be the uh, over damped response so if this value is greater than this it will be over damped and for that purpose you assume the value of r 